guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I am here to do a book review. And I want to do a book review on Orange Horses by Maeve Kelly, which is a collection of short stories all about women in uh, Irish society and most of them are marginalised women as well. This is published by an independent publishers in Ireland called Tramp Press um, and I received this book in exchange for an honest review from Tramp Press when I told them about the Irish Readathon that um, I was doing with some other booktubers um, and they very kindly sent this to me. But this is one that I've had on my radar, radar for a while and when I really really wanted to read and I'm so glad that I picked this up I'm so glad that I wanted to read it because it was amazing and I'm going to tell you all about it now. Book of 20 short stories and they all focus on a, a woman or a group of women um, and we're just seeing kind of like different struggles that a lot of them are going through and these struggles range from like a bunch of different things and um, some of them are uh like we see a lot of focus I think on um, women in the farming community because obviously Ireland is very much a farming country. We've seen a lot of women who um, are either have been taking care of the farm for their parents um, or their brothers or they're helping their husbands and we're kind of seeing how tough a life that is and sometimes how they're overlooked um, in the work that they are doing and sometimes they could work the land for their entire life and then they don't inherit the land just because they weren't born um, a boy basically. Um, we also see a lot of women deal with uh, infertility. Some some women in it are dealing with um, very difficult uh, infertility where they've had miscarriages or stillbirths. Um, others are dealing with late pregnancies. Um, we have a few stories where women get married quite late in life and they get pregnant late and they have children very late. Some of the women are also living in England um, in their stories and they're kind of talking about what it's like for them to um, basically to be an Irish person surrounded by English person and um, particularly during times where you know maybe the 70s where the troubles was, ha was happening and the IRA bombings were happening and how how difficult it was to be Irish in England at that time. So I just wanted to talk about a few of my favourite stories. Um, one of them was the second story in the book which was called Journey Home and this one is about a woman who is um, collecting her brother and sister-in-law and her uh, niece and nephew from the airport and all we kind of know is that her brother has kind of he's been living abroad for a while and um, somewhere I think he might be li living in South Africa or somewhere in Africa and um, he's kind of had this exotic life and the sister Mora has been left alone um, on the farm to take care of things to look after their ailing mother um, and to basically just keep the farm running but she's been told like her entire life even though you know she's in her 50s or 60s at this point in the story um, and she knows knows that she's not going to inherit the farm even though she has done everything she can to keep the farm running she knows the farm inside out she won't be the one to inherit it her her brother will inherit it just because he's the son and that's what their father would have wanted and we kind of she's just a really really angry character but her anger is so justified it's so like and it's so almost cathartic to read about this angry woman um and I loved her and um, I really really loved her and I just loved the um, bitterness in her voice when she was talking about her brother um, and just her annoyance at her brother the way he was talking about the farm and how he didn't he didn't really care about it he didn't have any clue what to do with it um, and we knew that he was like if he was to get the farm he would probably just destroy it he wouldn't do any good with it and the sister-in-law is definitely not a woman who would probably be able to live on a farm either um, and at one point she gets really angry at her brother and she just starts like speeding in the car like speeding down like the country lanes and going twists and turns like high speed like a race car driver and there's just this paragraph about how she's doing this and she's singing a drinking song in Irish um, and laughing like a mad woman and the kids and her sister-in-law are like screaming in the back because they're so scared um, and there was just something in it that was just so wonderful to read and did make you laugh and did make you be like you know really egg her on um, and that one was wonderful I really really liked that one. The um story that is the title of this book Orange Horses um, is a bit of a more serious story and that one is a woman called Elsie who has been beaten by her husband so badly that he caused her to lose um, her their child she was five months pregnant and she lost a child and this wasn't their only child they have loads and loads of other children and um, she is in a traveling community so this again is not a society you read a lot about in books and um, this Irish traveling uh, community and we're kind of seeing the prejudice and the just kind of the acceptance of some things in the community where um you know like Elsie is no one is surprised when Elsie is beaten they almost you know they almost say that she deserves it that you know every husband beats their wife and all this kind of stuff and how she was really sad over this pregnancy in particular that she lost because she felt like this the the boy she felt like the baby was going to be a boy and this was going to be the boy that protected her from the father um 
and this son would be the one to look after her as she got older because she knew that she already knew by her other sons that they would beat their wives when they got older and then she was like very concerned about her older daughter Bridget um, and Bridget is the one that sees a horse in the field that looks like it's orange and comes about like the whole orange horses thing. And I just wanted to read the opening chapter to the orange horses one which I think is quite powerful. Elsie Martin's husband beat her unconscious because she called him twice for his dinner while he was talking to his brother. To be fair, she did not simply call him, she blew the horn of the highest van to summon him. And we just kind of see her concern for her daughter and how at one point in the book she's had, there's a conversation, she's recalling a conversation she had about a lot of the other women um, and they're kind of talking about how th like the, all of them are being beaten by their husbands um, and they're all kind of talking about how they would run away and then they all start thinking about oh no but like the son would like you know I'd be concerned about him and you know, their father wouldn't keep them in school and all this kind of stuff and they're all talking with their sons and then Elsie is the one she's like well I'd be worried about Bridget and um, her daughter and because she says that all the other women suddenly think about their daughters but their daughters weren't the first thing that they thought about they all think of their sons first and their daughters second and it's just this kind of society that they're living in that the sons always come first and the boys always come first and the girls are always always on the on the back end of things always not really caring about um, and I just really I really thought that was really interesting um, and the end of the Orange Horses in particular I'd, obviously I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end of it but um, it's kind of open to interpretation I think for the reader and the reader can kind of think about what happened really and like kind of make their own kind of decisions and I really enjoyed that as well. Another one that I really liked and um, which I think just would do really really well in like today's world and today's society is one called Parasites um, and it's kind of following this uh, young woman who is this really famous writer and she writes about her life and she writes about what it's like to be you no know, woman, a single woman, a woman with a lot of uh, senseless sexual feelings and stuff like this and um she's really a real feminist writer I would think and we're seeing just how she gets into this relationship and he basically kind of sucks everything out of her and she starts becoming this person that she doesn't want to be and all her creativeness kind of is disappeared and all her focus is going on towards this man um, and we're seeing it as a reader but she hasn't quite seen it yet how it's all affecting her and how he uses her and abuses her and how you know he's jealous of her and it's just really really interesting um, and it reminded me a little bit of like just like Louise O'Neill's books and the way Lu Louise O'Neill writes um, and this author that was being described reminded me very much of a Louise O'Neill type character um, and I really really enjoyed that one um, and I just think that one in particular would be I think a lot of people um, on booktube today a lot of people who would be very much into feminism and reading women uh, in on booktube now would really enjoy that story in particular but I think anyone would anyone who likes reading about women by women for women would love 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 this book it was absolutely wonderful every story is about 10 pages long it's not they're not very long some of them are a little bit longer and um, but the ones that are longer deserve to be longer um, and every single story just has so much depth to it and the characters are so are so fleshed out in such a short space of time and you really kind of get to know the hearts and souls of these women um, and it's just so interesting how that is done and I just loved it so much and um, I just I, I was just I was just so pleasantly surprised by this and I kind of I knew I'd like it but I didn't know I would love it so much because I don't read an awful lot of short story collections you guys know this um, I don't pick them up that much uh, but this one is definitely the best short story collection I've ever read. It's one that's really resonated with me. One where I love, pretty much loved every single story in it. Um, and yeah, please, please, please check out this book because it is absolutely amazing. If you are into short stories, pick it up. If you're not into short stories, give it a chance. Um, yeah, absolutely wonderful. I loved it. Five out of five stars. So that's all my all my thoughts about this book please let me know what you guys think if you will pick the book up because I would really really love to know if you've read the book um, and thank you guys so much for, so much for watching I'll see you guys again next time bye